Welcome to the How to Play for Lorcana. Lorcana obviously is the Disney trading card game that includes everyone's favorites from all the greatest Disney movies. We got Mickey Mouse in many different forms. We got villains like Hans from Frozen. And of course, greats like the genie from Robin Hood. You only get to play two different colors in each deck. So this is an emerald sapphire deck. As far as deck building, you're allowed to have four of any one copy of each card, allowing you to build decks with multiple different types of Mickey Mouse. That two color constraint does test you a little bit because you want to use your favorite characters and they are spread across all the six different ink types. It's a 60 card deck and there are very little restraints other than the color combinations. There's three basic card types and I'm gonna include a, a second deck colors just to show you the different types. So obviously there are characters that you bring to life. There are items that you may use, kind of like an artifact. And then there are actions you make, subtype being songs. These are the songs that you're gonna be singing and your characters will be singing for you. How does one pay for all this fun? Well, with ink, of course. You see a cost in the corner. That is how much ink it costs to play these cards. How do you get ink? Well, once per turn, very similar to playing a land, you may take an inkable card with that special gold corner there and flip it over and it goes into your ink well. And each time you want to use an ink, you exert it. And at the beginning of your turn, you ready all of your cards. Say you had a, an exerted or a tapped creature slash character. At the beginning of your turn, you would ready your cards. You would set to see if there's any upkeep abilities. And then you would draw a card. So that's ready, set, draw. Very simple, very clean. So fast forwarding to the third turn for me, I have readied, I have set, and I draw for turn. Now I actually have two cards in my hand. They're both Mickey Mouses, they're both legal for this deck. As it's my third turn, I get to, for the third time, play a card into ink. It gets turned face down into my inkwell. And then, well, look at Mickey Mouse here. Costs three, so that's one, two, three, to play Mickey Mouse. But when you play this character, you may put the top card of your deck into your inkwell face down and exerted. Well, that just means face down and tapped. We don't even look at it, but wow, we just made some ramp. If you play Magic, this is all very familiar to you, and I'm sorry if that comes across in the delivery, because I'm a Magic player, but I'm here for Mickey Mouse. So on my fourth turn, I'm ready to do some ramp here. I am untapping, I mean ready, set, nothing to set, and I draw. And this is an action song, which means I can get my creature or my character to sing it for me. Because this song costs two, which would be two ink. Except songs, being special, allow you to tap a character, I mean exert a character, in order to play them. So Mickey Mouse will sing one jump ahead, allowing me to put the top card of my deck into my inkwell face down and exert it. Oh look, the next turn I'll have so much mana, I mean so much ink. So now coming to my turn, I have the genie character played unexerted because I'm, I've just readied my cards and started my turn. My opponent has Olaf exerted or tapped because they uh, used an ability or something. Now with the genie, I played the genie last turn we'll say, and it no longer has summoning sickness, or as they call it, the ink is not dried which I personally love. So the ink is not dried when you first play the card, but now it's my turn again, and I can either exert it or tap it to challenge Olaf, because I haven't talked about these numbers here. Three, four, that seems pretty, pretty straightforward, and it is. Three power, three toughness. One, three, well, I'm gonna exert the genie, and I'm gonna deal the three to Olaf, which would banish Olaf. So the genie is going to have that one damage from Olaf perpetually, so to speak. And once another three damage is dealt to the genie, it would be banished. Now, instead of doing this challenge, I could also use the genie to quest, which means 
these two numbers right here is my lore. If I tapped him, I exerted him, I would get two lore. Now instead of hitting your opponent for 20, we're looking to count up to 20. Count up to 20, you get 20 lore counters, you win. Your opponent is also trying to get lore counters. And you can either disrupt their plans, or you can try to go quicker. The only difference is that only exerted creatures, characters, can be challenged. So now that I've exerted the genie, I've opened the genie up to be challenged and destroyed, and I'm banished. Now this sort of truth allows you to banish the item to banish chosen villain character. And you'll notice that each of these have multiple types, subtypes. So this is a storyborn villain prince. Whereas someone like Olaf is simply a storyborn ally. Now you're banishing this, sacrifice this artifact in order to destroy target bad character. It's, it's banished, they, they banish when they die. I mean, when they are gone, they're banished. A quick note on priority actions, such as this subtype song action, and abilities from your characters only happen on your turn. You can only take actions and do anything on your turn. Split between the ready, set, draw of the upkeep and the main phase. You can have multiple creatures challenge your opponent's creature say exerting even though this math isn't needed both of them can exert to challenge one but you only have one round of doing this now our favorite characters also get upgraded this mickey mouse that we played earlier this detective mickey can be shifted so this costs seven normally to play and seven ink is quite a lot but shift five you may pay five to play this on top of one of your characters named Mickey Mouse. It's like a Pokemon. It evolves. I've already got my five-year-old daughter playing this game. It is a lot of fun, and it is really cool to be able to deck build, um, obviously noting that you need to have a good mix of inkable cards and non-inkable cards. Obviously, the ones that do not turn into ink are much better mechanically but you still need to pay for stuff now it's releasing august 18th but i've already seen people doing this on the tabletop simulator and so these are uh these are playtest cards that i've i've made for myself you know they're they're not real but they're uh they're a way to play the game